<laughs> wow, an interesting start to a video. So hi everyone, welcome to the channel. Uh, back today to do the D67 Windspace Hyper review. These are the Gen 2 Hypers. You've probably seen all my other Windspace videos by now. Uh, originally started reviewing Windspace wheels back in 2018 with the first generation Hypers. And that's the video where I really got into looking at, you know, lateral stiffness, Hadn't got the aero sensor by that point, but I was really looking into the engineering of the wheels. And so I'll leave my other Windspace videos referenced somewhere on the screen or down below in the description. Now today I'm going to take you on one of my favourite climbs in the country. Not the hardest, not the longest, but one of the most beautiful. Call it the, uh, the English Dolomites and you'll see why in a minute. If anyone knows where I am, let me know down below. Now I wouldn't say I was exactly working with Windspace closely on the development of the Gen 2s, but they were asking some engineering questions and I really pushed them to change a few things after the Gen 1s. And it was nice to see when I reviewed the D45s, they kind of listened to that. So no knurled end caps, they can destroy the carbon dropouts in bikes. Anodize the axles. The very early Gen 1s, some of them didn't have anodized axles and I just think it's not good for longevity. And they have a few other little bits and bobs which they considered and they actually tested. They built some prototype hubs, but they decided not to go for it for whatever reason, I don't know. But this is the D67 review. Not ideal for this kind of terrain that I'm riding today. So I'm on a very hilly four, four and a half hour ride today. But these are my go-to road bike TT wheels now, because as you'll see in this video, they've tested the fastest in the aero protocol. That said, I believe I'm running a really, really good setup, a rapid sort of cross country setup on these wheels right now. So that's a 32 mil, 5k TR in the back for the comfort gains of the aero gains up front I'm on a 28 normal 5k now when I do the aero tests and present you the aero data as you'll see later in the video all the wheels to keep coefficient of rolling resistance the same all the wheels are tested with the 28 5k non TR that's my uh, go-to control tire that's probably what most people out there are using and just on that topic Today, I'm running 70 in the front, 28, and 60 in the rear. As you know, that sounds quite low for my weight, but not one bit of road today has been smooth asphalt. So these kind of pressures, especially the 32 in the back, just skip over this rough stuff, like makes the ride so much more comfortable. By the end of this four hour ride, I'll be feeling a lot fresher than I would if I had 90, 100 PSI and 25s or 28s. So anyway, going back to the wheels, that was a massive tangent. Jesus, you scared the shit out of me trying to thank me. A little bit wider than Gen 1s, that was some of my feedback. They've dropped the knurled end caps and they've got anodized axles. The rim dimensions are now 21 internal, 28 and a half external. Uh, the rear is a slightly more bulbous profile than the front. It's not to make the rear wheel um, clump out more on the rear tire because they're, they're both the same internal width. So I don't know why. This front wheel is 60 deep. The rear wheel is 68. Now that's quite a lot more tooling investment to you know, do custom rim front and rear. They could have easily just done 60 and 60. If it were me, I would have done 65, 65. Uh, spokes, 21. Two crossed on one side and radio on the other side. Now I do have a bit of a problem with that. Um, it's one of the only things I can say badly about this wheel set is that when you've got radial on one side on the front wheel and there's only 14 spokes crossing on the, on the disc side, when you brake, only half of those 14 spokes are actually doing any pulling to the rim. So the leading spokes go into detention. And because the spokes are so short, because the rim's quite deep, um, they don't have a lot of inherent stretch, so they detension very quickly. And I'm pretty sure the brake noise, or what you call like disc brake noise on these wheels, is coming from the seven spokes. There's just not enough spokes doing the braking. Torsionally, it's not very stiff. 
and the seven leading spokes I think are going into resonance and I've had this before with carbon spoke wheels had it with the elite wheels um, if they're not really really high tension or if they're really short and really stiff and these are short because the rim is deeper and there's only seven of them doing the braking the other seven are detensioning and I think they're going into resonance Hubs wise they're exactly the same as the D45s and I had this on the D45s as well to a slightly lesser extent because there's a bit more stretch in the spokes being slightly longer but they're still very very uh, sensitive to the disc brakes. I don't get the same problem on a long CX Ray uh, tension to a high tension uh, you just don't get that noise even with the same pads and discs set up. Now, like I said, I'll be using these for the road bike TT tomorrow night and going forward until I find a, a faster wheel set. They are absolutely rapid because they do only have 21 spokes. They're bladed carbon spokes and the front wheel is 60 mil deep. So it's pretty perfect for a road bike TT. All I'm doing is just increasing the pressure slightly and I'll stick with the 28 on the front. So I think the 28 matches the profile nicer than 25 and it is chip seal tomorrow night. So I could do with that bit of extra vibration damping from a larger tyre. Right, here we go, my favourite climb. I might get a bit breathy, a bit of cattle grid. Absolute gliding over that on the, on the low pressure tyres. Right, apologise now for the squeak. That's a very dry bottom bracket. The GXP bottom bracket has finally died after about five years. Five years GXP press fit bottom bracket. Um, but yeah, oh, I've got a bit of tailwind going up here. Now, I'm in my new go-to cassette. Well, it's not new, I've had this now for about two years. But I've got an 1134 11 speed on the back and look, I'm on one to one gear ratio now going up this hill. And this is about 16% and it gets to over 20 up here. But yeah, a bit of a weird wheel set to come and do climbing on, but that is the YouTuber testing mule bike life. <sighs> kind motorist. Let me through. Uh, losing about 15 watts on the front there with the bar bag. I've tested that 15 watts at 35k an hour. Uh, but who cares? It's full of it's full of gels and food today. It's like four and a half hour ride. Haven't done one of those in about six months, so overpacked food just in case. Look at this road. Love it. Love that 32 back tire. All right. Here we go now, look, English Dolomites coming up. Stiffness wise, I'll get into the results inside and I'll show you those quickly on this graph. But as you can imagine, no prizes for guessing that they are the stiffest wind space in the lineup. And they've tested that way. That comes from having a deeper rim and a shorter spoke. So a shorter spoke will have less total stretch. It'll have the same stress in it as a longer one but less total stretch, so the displacement at the edge of the rim is just lower. Now, as I keep saying, is that a good thing? These wouldn't be my, well, to be honest, none of the wind space carbon spoke wheels would be my go-to everyday wheel set. I do think they're a bit stiff, but for racing, road bike TTs, absolutely the go-to. So I'll put the graph on screen of the stiffness test. You've seen that, how I do that. It takes into account the hub preload and any slop in the hub bearings, which I think is crucial because that's what you're gonna feel when you flick the bike left and right sprinting. So it's from unpreloaded and then a lateral load of 20 kilos placed at the outside of the rim. Aerodynamically, again, the fastest wheel I've tested. Not surprising, it is the deepest and it doesn't have many spokes. Um, now I'll put in a little extra line on the graph when we get inside for you to look at. I actually tested it with full bib tights and the rear mud guard, which I've only just taken off because it's coming into spring. And they were as fast as the fastest test of the D45s. So, pretty rapid, and I'll put the new line on the graph here too. So here we are coming up to the 20-something uh, percent section. Get down into the one-to-one -one gear. So my front chainring is a 52.34. Rear, I'm running 11.34, which are quite hard to find nowadays. 
Oh, I think the stall behind. Someone's removed the gradient sign, but I can assure you it's fucking steep. Rev it, hey! Oh, picking the front wheel up again. We'll have a little look around at the top. Oh, barely out of breath, that's well good. Normally this climb kills me. Look at that. Look at that view. I'll leave the aero protocol in the description down below. You can also find more of the aero testing diaries on my Patreon page. Thanks to all the patrons again for supporting me to do all this testing and get out there and just do laps of the same road over and over and over again. Changing tyres in the back of the car, changing wheels, changing discs. Just clicking subscribe is enough to support the channel. It'll give me some more clout when talking to the brands. And like, well, I'll leave that up to you. I do have a discount code for these wheels, which I'll leave down here now on the screen. I'm not afraid to say I really rate the Windspace stuff. I don't think there's anything more you could need from a wheel set if you're looking for that real top end advantage. And the weight of these, don't forget, is only 1,515 grams for basically a 60 and a 70 mil wheel set. Bleat on. Bleat on climb, there you go. What a magnificent climb. Shame about the road surface, but with the right tyre pressures, it's still a dream. You have to pinch yourself to think this is actually the UK. Could be in Europe right now. Well, we were in Europe until some fuckwits. Spoke balance test as well. Results, as you can expect from Windspace, are always exemplary. Now, yes, they could be YouTube specials, probably are, but it's just that inherent stiffness in those seven leading spokes that you constantly get this that whirring kind of resonance use the spectrum analyzer to actually look at the resonance of that noise and then look at the resonant noise of a plucking a spoke it's going to be a bit different because when i'm braking the spoke will actually decrease in tension so i'll need to load lock the brake load the wheel up with some torque on it then pluck the spoke and see if the resonant frequencies are the same on the spectrum analyzer but if i've done that it'll be in the video if i haven't it's just too much work i didn't have time send it stay at these roads man yeah, like if I'm doing that every day, I would say the hypers are a little bit too stiff. Right, you can stay with me for the downhill because it's worse than the uphill and we'll get these spokes ringing, hopefully. Yeah. Well, it's all right, the downhill, but in the wet. And there's a car, if there's a car coming up the other way, mm not good and yeah I prefer disc brakes on this kind of thing it's very bumpy as well uh, hope the camera doesn't come off oh she's wanging around like a good We'll see how hot the discs are at the end. Yeah, let's do that. Jesus, I forgot about that one. Oh, cut, 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 cut. <laughs> Good luck, didn't stall it. Right, now this is the point where if you're brave, you can just let off. But I'm a bit worried about the camera going into the front wheel, so. I, um, you can hear me really clearly, I can guarantee, because the tailwind is matching my speed perfectly. Right, let's see how hot these brakes are. Oh god, yep, she's ticking. The rear disc doesn't like that, does it? One of my favourite clients in the 
the UK. Short this week. That this so that's the result of the downhill, that's another XTR rotor in the bin. So I've just finished that lovely four hour ride, stunning weather. I said on that descent, uh, oh, I prefer disc brakes. And then two minutes later, the disc has melted, galled and balled up and made an absolute mess of my brake pads. I think you can agree, there's plenty of material left on these pads, but they've been trashed by the disc. And this disc's not even that old. I mean, I don't normally ride these XTRs, like I said, but with all the wheel tests that I'm doing, I need a stock of 160mm rotors for the aero test. Normally I'd ride my 180s with my 180mm adapters, but for the aero test, I, I keep 160s on everything. And, uh, yeah, you can see how the, the rotor is galled, and the steel has actually balled up and, and sort of cold welded itself in position and and checking the wear on these they're not that worn um, there should be there's plenty of thickness on the on the caliper so they failed very prematurely so it's galled on that side and it's also galled it's a little lump of steel there as well so that's going in the bin that's failed prematurely um, there's hardly any wear on it it's not even that old it's just overheated and galled up Yeah, I still prefer discs, but absolutely not Shimano Ice Tex. They're pure. Now, some of you smart asses in the comments will say, you shouldn't drag your brakes on a descent. Well, fuck you, because that descent is minus 20 to minus 30 gradient. It's bumpy as fuck, and there's traffic coming up, cars coming up, cyclists coming up the other way, so I'd rather not die. And as soon as you let your brakes off on that, it's like such a steep gradient, you're just away, going way too fast. So if a rotor can't handle two minutes of 20 to 30 percent downhill then it's junk in my eyes and there you go thanks for watching